Welcome to Master Math series on financial literacy for teenagers. In this series, we're going to try to explain some of the financial principles that you'll need to understand to navigate your world for the rest of your life. When you come to a you try it problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you have a really good time today. If you didn't watch the previous lesson on simple and compound interest, you should probably watch that one before you watch this lesson. In that lesson we talked about compound interest and you remember we calculated balances in future years in a situation where you were being paid compound interest or interest on the interest that you'd previously earned. Well that was kind of cumbersome. It took a long time to do that. But today we're going to learn an easier way to do it with a formula for compound interest. Let's look at an example and it will refresh your memory and it will also lead us to understanding this formula. Let's say you borrowed $1,000 from the bank and agreed to pay them 6% interest compounded annually. How much would you owe them after six years if you made no payments before then? Well, you remember we've got to calculate what your uh, balance was uh, at the end of the first year, which would include interest, and then we plug that into the second year, and you'd earn interest on the, the interest you'd earned in the, the first year and have a new balance at the end of the second year. It took a long time. Well, let's, let's create a table, and we can go through these calculations and figure this out. In this table, the left column is time, or the number of years. This is after the first year, this is after the second year, and so forth. The second column is principal and interest. Now that says principal and interest because you're going to earn interest on your interest and your balance at the end of each year is going to be higher than it was at the beginning of the year. So that number will change each year. We started out with $1,000 in that account. Now the next column is annual interest. And you remember there's a formula for that. Interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. Well, during the first year, our principal is $1,000. Our rate is 6% or 0.06, and our time is just one year. So our annual interest would be $1,000 times 0.06. Now, there's also a formula for calculating the balance in any particular year. And at the end of the first year, our balance would be P times 1 plus RT. Principal, $1,000, times 1 plus the rate, which is 0.06, times the time. And it's only one year. So our balance at the end of the first year would be $1,000 times 1.06. Now another way we could write that, $1,000 times 1.06, would be $1,000 times 1.06 to the first power. In a minute you'll understand why I put that first power in there. Okay, during the start of the second year then, our principal and interest is going to be what we ended up the first year with, $1,000 times 1.06. And then we're going to earn interest on that of 0.06. The formula is interest times principal times rate times time. Well, our principal, which includes the interest we earned during the first year, is $1,000 times 1.06. So during the second year, we're going to earn interest on that entire amount, and our interest would be 0.06. So our interest calculation would be 1000 times 1.06, the amount of money we started with, times 0.06. Our balance at the end of the first year, or at the end of the second year, would be calculated using the balance formula, and our principal would be this amount. So our principal is 1,000 times 1.06, that's our principal, and then we're going to multiply that times 1 plus our rate, 0.06, times our time, which is just one additional year, so this becomes 1.06. So our balance at the end of the, of the year would be our principal times 1.06, or $1,000 times 1.06 
times 1.06. Well, we could restate that $1,000 times 1.06 squared because 1.06 times 1.06 is 1.06 squared. Well, I want you to notice something. At the end of the second year, our balance was $1,000 times 1.06, that's 1 plus our interest rate, squared. So when we start the next year, we're going to start with that amount of money. And something interesting is going to happen. At the end of each year, our balance is going to be $1,000 times 1.06 to a number that's equivalent to the time. And that is the formula for calculating your balance in a compound situation. Balance equals principal times 1 plus the rate to the t power, t being the amount of time. All right, you try this one. Now, if you don't remember or didn't understand all the uh, mathematical gymnastics I went through on the last page, don't worry about it. Just memorize this formula and use it to solve this problem. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. In this problem, You've got a credit card balance of $1,200 and the bank's charging you 18% interest compounded annually. And you're asked to figure out what your balance would be in five years. Well, we can use the formula B equals P times 1 plus R to the T power to figure out what it would be after five years. Our principal is $1,200. 1 plus our rate which is 18% or 0.18, would be 1.18. And since it's for five years, we'll take it to the fifth power. Now you can use a calculator to figure out what 1.18 to the fifth power is. And then you can multiply that by 1,200. And you're going to find out that your balance after five years is $2,745.31. That's more than twice what you originally owed them. That interest really adds up. You opened an account at the Bank of Bedlam four years ago. The account pays 5% interest compounded annually. You've made no withdrawals or deposits since then. The balance is now $7,293.40. What was your original principal amount? Well, we can figure that out using a little bit of algebra and this formula. Let's just plug what we know into the formula for balance and we'll come up with a solution to tell us what the original investment or the original principal was. Right now our balance is $7,293.40. And we know from the formula that that equals the original amount we invested times 1 plus the interest rate of 0.05 to the fourth power because we're trying to figure out how much money we had four years ago. Now we can do the math and figure out that 1 plus 0.05 to the fourth power equals 1.2155. So our principal times 1.2155 equals $7,293.40. We want to solve for P. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 1.2155. And when we do that, we can determine that the original amount we invested was $6,000.30. That's our lesson on the formula for compound interest. Now let's see how well you understand this. Go to www.mastermath.info 
And under the lesson for formula for compound interest, you're going to find quizzes, worksheets, answer sheets, exams, all kinds of stuff to test your knowledge of this subject. I hope you learned a lot today. I hope you had a pretty good time and come back again real soon.